Welcome to Broken English Films podcast. All right, well, as I said in the previous video, I'm going to tell you about some of my exploits and what I do because, well, to be frank, why not? Now, I had made a promise to a, a very old friend of mine, and I don't mean very old because he's very old. I mean very old because we've been friends for a very long time. We've been friends since we were about three, and we're a bit older than that now. But he invited me to his wedding in Mauritius, of all places. A place I'd never even thought of going to. And then, while I was in the hospital with my mum last year, and she knew about the plans for the wedding, it's a very special moment in which she met a Mauritian porter as we were being transported around the hospital. And she said, we have a family wedding in Mauritius next year. And with everything that happened, I could not not go. It was very meaningful to me and my relationship with my friend is very meaningful to me. And so I did. The one thing I didn't factor is how long it would actually take for me to get there. So I saw the what I thought was the best flight and I booked that as soon as I could. And it just turned out that it would be 31 and a half hours of travel time. And that's not including getting from the airport or to the airport, but just along the way, 31 hours. Sorry, 31 and a half. Okay, and then of course gave us a lovely brownie and this, that and the third. And that's us progressing over. And I couldn't resist zooming out a little bit and checking out the different areas. And of course seeing where my mum's from as well via the globe that they provide during the flight and on the screens. You could tell by me taking one too many shots, that's what I was looking at. So there's a plane going around over my old haunts in London and looking back at Bratislava and Ternova before I arrived in Amsterdam. Now when I got to Amsterdam I found that I would have five hours to kill. So I obviously went into the airport and looked around. You found your pancakes being peddled, you found your Dutch kitchen being peddled. And Dutch food gifts with a great looking old man in the middle. Lots of character. And then every time I pass by a kiosk or a Starbucks I want to take a photo because I don't really want to spend a lot of time looking at it while I'm there. But this is what Starbucks had to offer in Amsterdam. And of course their McDonald's are very, very famous from a certain movie named Pulp Fiction. But unfortunately they didn't have beer on offer on the kiosk, so I was a bit disappointed. Because you can buy a glass of beer according to Vincent Vegas. It had been about 27 years since I'd been there. The last time we were there was when we were en route to Chile and Bolivia in 1996. But it was an interesting environment, a very nice airport. Burger and a beer being offered, and good Wi-Fi, everyone gathering and relaxing. And some weird man there. I really like this orange soap, smells good, so I had to take a photo of that. And the reviews of the toilet cleanliness as well. Of course, you know, obligatory wide shot of a Starbucks. And I got myself an espresso. It did the trick, I think. I stayed awake for a while. I continued waiting around, watching people watch people and watching people look at screens. There was the hand sanitizer kiosk and the obligatory tulips thing with a man very happy to see me taking photos of him staring at flowers and bulbs. I mean, you're going to be part of the stereotype. I also found the treat yourself to some happy very interesting to see because they were really, really nice and pleasant in terms of the staff there. I also liked this electric powered bike station. Well, it was not an electric powered bike station. It was a power station which people powered by cycling on a bike and then everyone getting ready to board the next flight where we will be taking KLM over to Paris and as me with my earplugs taking a selfie or oh, there we're taking off I'd have to remember it was a blur so all that travel time takes out oh yeah. and of course I was having to leap 
11 hours in the future very quickly. Just fine if you have a couple of days. Sorry if you have a couple of days to adjust, but I had only a couple of days there. Got to come up with the cheese stereotypes for the Dutch with their mini cheddars. And then before you know it, you're descending towards Charles de Gaulle Airport. I don't know if that ended up, well, I doubt that was the Air France one afterwards, but that's a pretty good zoomed in image of him. That was just only in the camera. And then that was the plane that I had taken. You can see the light slowly starting to fade but also I'm messing with the camera's brightness to be able to try and capture what I want to in terms of the image. And that's walking through Charles de Gaulle which I thought was a really interesting airport to look at especially with people like this everywhere. I love the way the stone goes there. And everyone continues working, 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 as if that's the only driver in life. I didn't end up getting the app, but, you know, I got by. And then boarding to transfer terminals. And of course, everywhere's Chanel and Caviar and Cartier. I didn't buy that many of any of them, to be honest. But actually, that's a lie, I didn't buy any of any of them. I'm walking through the glitzy Charles de Gaulle area. Had a little museum there, a little La Halle. Le Hull, I'm not sure. Me sitting in front of an Hermes sign, well, the Hermes shop. And then the Louis Vuitton shop. I'm looking a bit tired there, but I get more tired. Don't worry. I browsed around to see what I might want to eat, and of course I ended up deciding on Yo Sushi. It was a decision I probably won't make again. And the funny thing was that I had had Yo Sushi before in London, and thought that it was disappointing, but now that it was in Paris and I was tired, sushi seemed appealing. Well, if you looked at the reviews of the place, you wouldn't have gone there. And I didn't. It looks better than it is. It was really so-so sushi, especially coming from Vancouver. But, you know, you take a photo of 12 and uh, you consume it and you enjoy it. Well, you accept it. <laughs> Probably would have been better if I just picked up some stuff at Relay. Which I did, by having to grab some orange Gina and uh, relive the time in King's Cross in the 90s when we, always wait, when we always used to get a bottle. Heading down to board the Air France plane to Mauritius now, which everyone was eagerly waiting for. And there's some shots of an engine or a propeller. And there's a certain someone. I was sat next to a guy who could not stop coughing the entire trip through. He was nice to a degree, but I was sort of, ah, the last thing I want is to get sick before I go. And of course, uh, thankfully I wasn't. But I did see a film named Simone. And anyone that knows me knows I have a very significant person in my life with that name. So I had to get some details on the film before I had a very late dinner with, believe it or not, a bottle of wine. And of course, it's Air France, so we had to have a bit of cheese and settle down for a movie where I regrettably watched Scream 6. I mean, you got to excuse me, I was tired. And it was what you'd assume. Just as good as you'd assume. Yes, I regret that. And then there's everyone passed out, apart from that one guy that's staring directly at me. There's the sun coming up through the night, the snacks that they'd put out for everyone as we waited. 
and the dissension slowly towards Mauritius. The beautiful fluffy clouds and some orange juice. <laughs> that was the breakfast that we were served. It was actually really good. More clouds, the Indian Ocean beneath. I don't know what I photographed there, but we'll go with it. And then a great reflection of the rest of the cabin as we slowly descend into Mauritius. There's me taking more photos of the screen so that I can narrate to you about looking at a screen of a photo of the screen. And there's the forest area. And there we can see the plane pulling in and the exterior of the airport as seen from the interior. And the, and the flight that was taken. So just going into Mauritius and then signing up Sorry, filling out the forms to declare I am healthy. Hoping I am, because there was a guy coughing and splattering next to me. And then seeing the fauna on the wall. And the beginning of feeling like you're in a tropical environment. Everyone gathered ready to be picked up. And then beginning to drive through with a really friendly taxi drive from Welcome Pickups. And noticing the face and the horns on, I think it's called the Pinton, as we drove through the island from the south side all the way to the top to see the Lux Grand Galbe. It was very, very tropical in its feel, in its look. Cacti on the side of the road. And then the Lux. I've never been anywhere like this before. But if you see any materials of what it looks like, it is real. It looks exactly like that. It's that tropical. It's that special. There's a special price tag on top of that, but it really is great. So I got served this welcome drink and I was going to have the rundown of what it was like. Got into the room, there's my name. There was my bed. I think they thought I'd be there with someone, but I was by myself. And there's the layout and the look of, of Mauritius itself, that type of water. That type of a setting, all for my oldest friend's wedding. And I may have had a drink or two that night, which I probably shouldn't have with no sleep. I remember as soon as I got there and I met with my friend, we, we started having a bit of whiskey, or I started having a bit of whiskey, and before I knew it, I wasn't as clear-headed as maybe I should have been. And thankfully, there were lots of English speakers there, so when I got lost trying to find my room on the way back, I was directed in the right way. But that was the first day party on a beach and the buffet dinner which was meant to be on the beach but they got some information wrong so we ended up going inside 